everyone, and welcome to your first SDG Summit Day. First of all, we really appreciate this possibility to be part of the summit today. Thank you, CSR Europe, for handling all the practical matters and enabling this. I am Mira Kokkonen from FIPS, and today we are going to talk about data as part of corporate social responsibility. We are going to have a very interesting agenda ahead with Finnish innovation fund Citra and also a Finnish company Functus. Our speakers are Heli Parikka and Tina Harkonen from Citra and Mikko Merisari from Functus, who is going to present a company case today. We encourage you to send your questions through the chat function and aim to answer as many of them we have time to. You can also meet us tomorrow at 10 a.m. and come to chat with us. Before hopping into today's team, a couple of words about FIPS. We are Finland's leading corporate social responsibility network and the biggest sustainability alliance in Scandinavia. Together, we aim to boost sustainability development with forerunner companies. We are also CSR Europe's national partner organization and hence part of this event. Sustainable development goals are linked to our actions strongly. A significant one, partnerships for goals, guide our events and teams, and together with Citra, we have been practicing one of our year's team, data and technology boosting transformation. Today, you are going to hear more about this fruitful cooperation, but in a nutshell, during this year, we, Citra, and around 30 pioneering companies have set out to identify and implement best practices for a responsible use of data. According to our Sustainability in Finland survey, 94% of Finnish companies already say that they invest in the protection of customer data and in ensuring the privacy of customers as part of their responsibility work. But responsible data economy is not just general data protection regulation. And today we are going to hear more about fair data economy. And since I will hand over to turn to Citra. Hello everybody, I hope you can hear me. My name is Tina Herkenen, I come from Citra, where I work for a project called I have the fair data economy. And just a few words about Citra, since I'm assuming not many of you know as an organization. We are a think, do and connect tank. We are a fiercely independent uh, future house, uh, but we still are controlled by the Finnish parliament. Um, our aim is to make Finland as well as Europe sustainable and successful also in the area of data economy. But that's enough about Citra. Uh, now I will move on to talk about fair data economy. Now, now what is that? And in a nutshell, it's, it's certainly a tall order to explain the whole thing. But as we all know, data has indeed become the world's most valuable raw material. But uh, there is a problem. Uh, we actually made two surveys, uh, one two years ago and one a year ago, where we talked to the citizens of four different EU countries, as well as to the companies of four different EU countries. The countries were Finland, France, Germany and the Netherlands. And the companies said that at the moment they don't get the, the benefits out or they cannot see the potential of data economy because of the unfair rules. And by unfair rules, they meant that companies such as Google, Facebook, and the other successful big tech companies are playing by their own rules. So these rules come from America, they come from China, but in Europe, uh, we also wish to protect the individuals. Hence the companies are facing serious challenges. They would like to utilize data as raw material. They would like to innovate, but they need these common and transparent rules to, to be able to do that. So in this project, we are laying a foundation for this fairer data economy, which means that the uh, successful digital services based on trust and based on trust 
between the companies, between companies and the individuals, and the individuals, companies, and the society as a whole. The point is that value needs to be created for everyone, not just the big tech, but SME companies, us individuals, the people, the public sector, and so on. So when we say fair data economy, what do we mean by that? Uh, there's all kinds of fairness. It's very, very subjective. To us, is uh, it's about transparency. And in the very core of fair data economy is trust. You cannot have trust without transparency. But it's also about sharing data. You need to share data to be able to have the huge volumes of data needed or the diversity of data needed for innovations uh, for new digital services. So uh, fairness is about transparency and trust, and it's also about consent. Us individuals need to be in control. We need data sovereignty. We need to be able to control and see who is using our data and how. Uh, we feel that there is this huge potential in Europe where we could have uh, our part, our share in the huge uh, volumes of dollars and euros. And currently that is not happening. Some companies even see that GDPR, which is protecting us individuals, is a problem. Uh, some of the companies see it as an opportunity. When they need to have a serious look at their uh, data, particularly personal data, uh, they need to understand their data assets. It helps them to, to realize the potential of the data at the same time. When we say fair data, we actually mean that you need to go beyond GDPR. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? Uh, going beyond GDPR is, should not be news because uh, uh, being able to comply uh, with regulation, that, that's not competitive advantage, advantage. That is expected from you anyway. So there's no news in complying uh, with the laws. But uh, going beyond GDPR might mean that your company has a, has a competitive advantage when compared to companies that are not, for example, transparent with their data use. We have these eight rights, and I'm not going to go through all the rights. I'm going to pick just three of them, just to give you an example of what do we mean by going beyond GDPR. And by the way, when talking about GDPR, we are, of course, talking about personal data. But the, probably the greatest potential of fair data economy is between the companies, i.e. in the B, B2B area. But the uh, GDPR example is here because you all know it and you understand it uh, and it's easier for us to explain what we mean. For example, number one, a right to be informed. Well, you can all read the legal texts. Uh, the right to be informed is fairly clear. But when, you, um, when we talk about fair data economy is something more. It has to be seen from the individual's point of view. It means that you need to have open, clear, and most of all, proactive customer communications about the data use, all the benefits, but also about the downside. If there are problems, you need to communicate immediately with your customers. And you need to be open and clear and proactive from the very first click, the customer, the end user, the individual has with your company the first time the person enters your website, for example. And of course, it needs to be two-way or multi-way interaction. If you are in a, uh, in a 
a data sharing ecosystem, for example, it's multi-way. It's not just between you uh, as a company and the individual, but there are multiple stakeholders in the data sharing ecosystem. So that two-way interaction is important and you need to encourage that. You need to give people tools to be able to communicate with your company easily. Uh, it has to be supported with these tools that you give to your customers. There's no point in hiding how to contact your uh, data protection officers, for example, or your customer service people. Second one, right to access. Um, everything I said before uh, is valid here as well. But these easily found and easy to use online tools need to be there for everybody and you need to be able to access whenever you want and of course the problem is that the word easy is subjective but we all know for example that if we if we use a particular social media platform for example it's not easy and it's not meant to be easy because you're not the customer you're the product you're the a data creating product in that service uh, we see that the, the legal text may be tens and tens of pages. They are using words that are hard to understand. This is exactly the opposite. May I have the next slide, please? Uh, there are eight rights. I'm going to touch uh, upon three of them. And the third one is right to data portability. OK, if I'm using, let's say, a wearables, a an Apple Watch or an Aura Ring or another kind of device where I gather, for example, health data. I need to be able to utilize that data if I swap the device, if I start using a Fitbit instead of Garmin, for example. But currently, that is not the case. Data is, because the, the law says so, data is indeed downloadable or accessible in some format or other, but oftentimes is on purpose made difficult for the customers. So no, this is not the case. It needs to be downloadable via a guided process as a whole, and it needs to be logical and understandable, and it needs to be, uh, you need to be able to utilize that data in other services, devices, or applications. OK, this is just one example, but now I think it's the right time to start talking about data as an integral part of corporate social responsibility. What is it all about? My colleague Heli Parikka from Citra will explain. So hello uh, and welcome to our session also on my behalf. So my name is Heli Parikka and uh, I work as a specialist uh, for the Fair Data Economy project here in the Finnish Innovation Fund, Citra. Uh, I'm also the other author for the CSR Encompasses Data Memorandum, which we have uh, been published actually today. So really fresh. Um, I will be presenting you some of the insights uh, of the memorandum. But first, uh, let's talk a little why we feel this topic is important. So Tina was es explaining about the GDPR and it, its uh, um, effects for individuals. So it came, as we all know, into force two years ago, setting a new standard for the protection of personal data. So much has changed with this act. Uh, data rights of individuals have improved a lot and citizens uh, have more opportunities also to influence uh, to the use of their data. But despite of this, uh, there is still lack of adequate ways uh, for companies to organizations to prove they operate in a trustworthy manner. Uh, but also not only the companies, but also the individuals, they lack the actual, actual ways or tools even to distinguish uh, the trustworthy services or tools for the data sovereignty, which uh, Tina also mentioned. Uh, 
So with the data uh, sovereignty, we mean the individual's uh, rights to, for example, decide themselves uh, with who and uh, their, or for who their data is being shared. Uh, we also claim that the trust is increasingly important for companies when they want to differentiate themselves in the markets. Uh, but the case is at the moment that the, or we claim that the companies yet fail to make this uh, link between uh, responsible or sustainable use of data and CSR. But it offers real value. Uh, for the businesses through different ways. Uh, these ways, for example, are uh, mitigating risks and offering greater efficiency for the different operations in the company, for example. Uh, even possibilities to build data networks and create innovations uh, within these networks. But most importantly, uh, we would say, by creating the greater customer trust and without the trust the business will will uh, for sure suffer in the long run uh, if i have may have the next slide please so making uh, the long story short we claim that uh, data should be as you know also said more integral part uh, of the traditional csr but to be able to develop this further we need the common definitions, we need the common understanding around this issue and topic. All in all, I think we would need a framework, a proper framework around the topic. Um, so what we did, um, as you previously heard, uh, we gathered around 30 companies and organizations uh, to develop and discuss with us um, how this, this should be taken uh, further and how we should approach the issue. Um, after the workshops, uh, we gathered up the results from them and uh, we gathered the discussions to the memorandum, uh, which you had the link there earlier. And uh, if I may have also the next slide, please. Uh, in, the in this document, uh, we present three aspects uh, for the building blocks of sustainable use of data. First and foremost, of course, being the rights and privacy of individuals. Uh, without the trust from individuals, customers, citizens, uh, society, uh, and a whole, the business will will suffer, we know that all. Secondly, we claim that the data becomes even more integral part of companies' responsible operations when it starts to benefit not only the company itself, but also the company's partners, society, or individuals in the form of better services, for example. So here, uh, one tool, one, one very good tool we are talking about in the document uh, is the data strategy. Uh, we say that it is vital for uh, this kind of development and it can help uh, organizations grasp uh, their data repositories, better understand the data they possess all in all and uh, identify gaps. So thirdly, uh, we wanted to also touch upon the issue of uh, environmental and climate impacts uh, stemming from the use of data. And I think uh, this should be taken into account also. So uh, energy consumption of the ICT solutions uh, is increasing uh, as volume, volumes of data being transferred all the time grow rapidly. So we need to pay more attention to the greenhouse emissions and material consumption resulting from the ICT operations. But having said that, we also acknowledge that digital solutions also benefit the environmental 
protection. But from the company point of view, attention given to minimizing uh, the collection of data, for example, unnecessary data, and uh, using and choosing the green energy sources could be one way of making the effect. But without going uh, uh, deeper to these issues, um, all in all, our memorandum uh, entails a few other perspectives, but also proposals, tools, and tips for the organizations to approach the theme, which I think is still quite fresh and new, and we hope that this will uh, wake up discussion and thoughts. Um, if I may have the next slide, please. Um, I would uh, raise one issue from the document uh, ending my share of this presentation, and this is the distinguishing characteristics of the data responsible company. This is actually uh, one uh, of the chapters in our memorandum, and um, just as a background, I would say that the, with the help of the organizations uh, which took part in our workshops, uh, we gathered these definitions and recommendations for the data responsible actions. Um, <clears throat> I will not go into details uh, or uh, go uniquely th through these. I hope you have time to look into the document uh, better, but one important point of view would be the ethical perspectives and ethical analysis which help building the organization's sustainable use of data. But uh, in these um, characteristics, we used uh, uh, principles for a European data academy as a, um, uh, as a starting point, and we derived these from there. The principles for a European data economy were published in 2019 during the Finland's EU presidency. Uh, I would sum up these uh, points here in the slide by saying that the the realization of a responsible data use actually begins when the company does its best to ensure the transparency of data use, considers carefully the individual's rights and wishes. And companies, they must ensure also that it has an understanding and updated competencies, updated technology for managing the data repositories. Uh, finally, when these aspects are taken care of, company may even go as far as start to sharing, uh, for example, the chosen data sets with its reliable partners through, of course, common contracts. So, to end, companies should ask always themselves a few basic questions uh, concerning the use of their data. For example, uh, do the company's uh, data management practices uh, meet the individual's need for respect for their privacy? Is the starting point of service development in an active and open dialogue with the customers? Or do maximal data collection and the energy used for it serve the company's climate goals? And this is where these issues are combined even. Um, I will uh, leave you with these questions and hopefully these thoughts in mind. And uh, we really hope you have time to look into the document, uh, CSR encompasses data, uh, read through, and it is, of course, very fresh uh, published today please share it also with your colleagues. Um, this is just the first thought piece of this topic. And uh, we really hope to continue the dialogue uh, with our partners, with companies, uh, on how to develop these thoughts further and start even implementing uh, in the reality of CSR. Uh, I want to thank you for your time and interest, of course, and please do contact us in case you wish to ask, discuss, 
this further with us. And uh, next, we will have in line Mikko from uh, Punctus, who will give a great um, case on how to enhance the transparency in data report through data, data reporting. Thank you very much on my behalf. Well, thank you, Tina, and thank you, Heli, for introduction and, and really interesting uh, questions. Uh, so my name is uh, Mikko Merisaari, and I wish you good afternoon from Espo, this is Finland, Funktos headquarters at home. And I'm bringing you today uh, one case uh, study, or okay, case, uh, practical case of, of data transparency reporting, namely integrated data report. Uh, about a few words about Functos. We are a some two years young company specializing in integrated data reports, the topic today, and, uh, and, and it has, in addition, also the financial investor and sustainability and CSR strategic communications with, with major companies and corporation, corporations here in Finland. Uh, personally, I have a working history. Where do I come from? From communications, investor relations, and CSR in Finnish uh, corporations from quite a many sectors. And then in this path, I have also involved in strategic business and financial planning with management teams. And then finally, during this journey and path, I have seen quite a lot of the digital revolution inside out, beginning from the basic digitization of processes in, in early 2000 and to, the, to today's data-driven and enabled business and pro, business uh, value creation and profound questions of how value is created with data and what questions are, are to be considered when, when creating value with data. And this integrated approach is also the basic idea about the behind the integrated data report as well. So we can hop on to the next slide, please. So for a primer, I would like to uh, give you a flavor of, of the most important triangle of, of integrated data reporting. Mm, I'm building on the fact that the data is one of the most valuable and challenging same time asset of a company one company can assess. Uh, by a challenging, I mean, I mean that the use of data requires also the consent and trust from the data providers, especially when the company operates with private individuals, but also business partners as well. And, and, and as we all know, the data has become a raw material of the modern age for businesses. It's a mean to increase operating efficiency, make better decisions. It is a major driver of added value. And it, it, it is also uh, an end product for sale for some companies. And in this vein, also the artificial, artificial intelligence applications have raised a whole new bunch of questions about how to use and leverage data in business and, and what all questions including ethical questions should be considered. So as a result, the data and this productive and responsible utilization now today determine the risk and opportunities of a business more than ever before. And at the same time, as we heard before, the stakeholder expectations, namely the stakeholder, all of the stakeholder expectations for responsible, mutual and ethical use of data are growing rapidly. And one company should be and must be able to, to answer to these requirements. So the triangle, it has three, si three sides, which I next go through, so that the one side, one side of, of course, is that the data used in the business should be uh, compliant, even exceed regulation to be sound and safe. So the business must meet the regulations fully and be compliant fully with it to be, to be successful business in the long run. And secondly, the company should be accountable for their compliance with data privacy and regulated regulations for their stakeholders. They should be able to demonstrate practically their compliance to stakeholders of different kinds. And thirdly, and the most interesting part from my side, of course, is this, that, that the companies should be able to articulate the value they create with data to customers and stakeholders as a, as a whole. And at the same time, they should, be, uh, they should understand and communicate the value of data they collect from customers and stakeholders. So they have to be able to materialize the value exchange taking place between the business and the stakeholder. It's not only one way street, it's a two way street for the trust and for the business to thrive on the long run. So the main question is that what kind of value exchange based on data takes between businesses and customers? 
customers and stakeholders. What value does the company provide to stakeholders? And how valuable is the data the stakeholders provide to business processes? And this triangle is the, is the main idea of integrated reporting. It should be able to answer the most fundamental, fundamental question, though, how does my company create value for itself, its customers and stakeholders in a compliant, sustainable and fair manner? And finally, this is also a question of transparency and trust. And then we can move to the next slide. Thank you. And uh, one practical uh, example case that I would look, I'd like to present today is, is the OP uh, integrated data report. And, and it's, a, it's a concept that is uh, developed to improve understanding of value creation, exchange, transparency and stakeholder trust in a con communication and in, in stakeholder dialogue. Uh, this integrated report, data report is quite a new name, a new concept, and you won't find a quite a many hits from the Google if you hit the search button. But in Finland, we have this uh, OP financial group that has, has, has published uh, now two and third is on the way reports here in Finland. And our company Functos has, has helped them along the way. Uh, one should note that also there are also other data reports but they are used mainly by public sector here in Finland and they concentrate mainly on the data governance, compliance and accountability issues. So uh, from our point of view, they exclude the value creation uh, lens of this whole data, data uh, triangle, so to say. And in that way, we consider them not to be integrated, but they are the traditional uh, compliance and accountability based data reports. But there are good examples of those as well. A uh, few words about the OP financial group. Uh, it's, the, it's the leading financial group in Finland and it operates in retail and business banking and uh, non-life insurance. And the business model for them is cooperative and the meaning that the customers are owner customers and there are over 2 million uh, Finns as their customers, private individuals as their customers. So in this light, it's quite a natural way for OP to approach the value creation with data with which and for their owner customers, also in light of data. The OP's report follow the functus's concept of integrated data report to assess, manage and communicate use of data in a sustainable value creation. Uh, if we look in the practical, in short, it is some 40 page report annually published that summarizes the essential answers to essen essential questions. Why and how OP collects, processes, manages and utilizes data in business and for the best benefit for the customers and society as a whole, in ad addition to OP itself. It also gives light to a different strategic priorities and development projects and objective in use of data. It, it's, it gives a long-term and short-term development um, story for OP in data utilization and responsible use. For example, the OP has uh, three main objectives for data use to create better product services and, and customer experience for its customers, to boost its operations and efficiency and, and to manage risks. And finally, and of most importantly, of especially in finance sector, but all sectors as whole, the report, the integrated report communicates OPs, a very strict and defensive approach to cybersecurity, data protection, privacy, and risk management. The OP itself says that, that they're mainly in risk management business, and this, this gives a good, good, good comprehensive view on, on their view of on data. Um, if you would like to learn more about uh, OP's uh, data, uh, integrated data report, uh, you can go to their web pages, not just yet, please, and, and download it from in, in, in English and on the Finnish from their publications page. Just navigate to op.fi and then go to the publication side on, on their pages. And this report, it's good to note that this report is, is published in conjunction with their annual report and, and, and other, other annual statements, including uh, responsibility report. And then we can take a look, uh, next slide, the, the, mm, 
building blocks of an of an sample integrated uh, data report, and and this is a general approach, I would say, and that, by that I mean that these building blocks are all important for for these communications to take place. But every company or organization that wishes to make make a report should assess these blocks in terms of relevance and materiality of course as a, as a whole so that every every topic must not be covered in 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 similar detail or or, or depth but uh, this report summarizes all the essential parts of sustainable and compliant way of creating value with data so it, this really is a 360 degrees approach to to responsible and sustainable and also business business driven value creation with data it has some key components that can be seen on the left hand side of the of the column it has also some good practices that we have developed on the on the middle and on the on the right hand side <clears throat> it has of course it has to have clear objectives that answer the question that why our company why we are preparing a report for our business and our stakeholders and there, and, and as you can see there are many many good rationales for that a few highlights from each column I would I would like to raise and, and pinpoint the, the most fundamental part of the integrated uh, thinking is to include both the data balance sheet and the value creation model and the data governance and data protection part to this model. So these are the main building blocks we saw in the first slide, the triangle thinking. So you have the value creation, you have the data governance and you have the data protection. All these have to be uh, balanced and integrated uh, and, and assessed in, and, and in conclude, uh, included in, in this kind of report. And, and also this addresses the both all of the data quality, usefulness, timeliness, and utilization of data. It is both strategic and technical at the same time. Uh, the, data, the data balance sheet on the third point, third point is, uh, is a concept inside the report. I could talk one hour about the data balance sheet, but now the time is limited, but in, in short, it combines the data capital and the data resources of the company and their value drivers, meaning the quality, usefulness, timeliness to uh, the use of data on the data asset side. So the data balance sheet uh, uh, first combines the data, data capital of a company, the data repositories of the company and the data services and products produ produced with data that we call data assets. And, and as a financial balance sheet, also the data balance sheet should be in theory and in practice also in balance so that the aim of the company is to improve the value of its data itself and the value creation by, by its data products and data services. And, and there cannot be a unbalanced situation in a healthy business. So, so this is one uh, strategic uh, point, a question to assess when you when you make your own data balance sheet. And in addition, there is also the value creation model. If you know the integrated reporting uh, model, this is a compliant with that thinking. So it answers the question: How does a company create internal and external value from its data capital, data inputs? in short and long-term basis and what kind of outputs and external uh, external impact it creates with data. So it's not only a question that what kind of uh, impact the and, and benefits the company makes for itself. <clears throat> That's It's also one important question to be a healthy business, but it also answers the question that what kind of external good things <clears throat> the company creates for the external world uh, namely for the society or for the environment or for the for the um, intellectual basis of a, of a society with the use of data. Then on the middle side, few points <clears throat> on the how-tos. It's very important to keep this report understandable and easy to approach for different stakeholders. And this can be achieved by providing both the big picture, the story behind the data and the data sustainability, why and how we do this as a whole, and, and combine it with the practical stakeholder focused case examples. It's not just on the internal report for auditors or owners or 
or personal management. It's it's a practical story for stakeholders in, at the same time. How does the company create value with, with data? And as we hope that this report is also a significant management tool, and in order we in order to do, do this, uh, the report contains also key objectives, action plans, and KPIs from different areas included in this report. So this they can follow annually and from year to year that how how different uh, sides of, of the story has have evolved. And finally, the report should serve as a as an tool for accountability regarding data protection, data privacy and risk management to, to build and uh, and to foster trust. And the last part, the why should one make create a report uh, at Functus, we start every reporting project, small or big, by assuming that we create better world internally and externally uh, by doing this report. We want to help companies to understand their value creation with data, to be a business compliance and sustainability CSR driven, to in integrate all of these most important aspects of, of modern business in modern markets and modern operating environment. And by improving the transparency internally and externally, we hope to create a more fair data economy with our customers. All in all, I think, and I hope that this case presentation has given you some food for thought and, and most importantly, a determination to drive transparency further in your own organizations regarding to data. So for my part, I thank you. And next, I think I hand over to Tina. Thank you. Thank you, Mikko. There were some interesting discussions online in the chat, so we will give you an opportunity to ask those questions later. But being, we are being okay. very horrible and devious here because we are going to ask you questions first. So um, before we give you the opportunity to ask your questions, we wish you uh, to answer four questions we have mm -hmm. on Fair Data Economy. You have the uh, web address there. It's www.menti.com, uh, but you also need a code to access that. And now we'd like you to uh, answer the first question. Do you think, listening to all of this, that data should be an integral part of corporate social responsibility? So the first question of the four. I think we'll give you a minute to access that web address. Oh, excellent result already now. I'm starting to suspect that it's just, you know, us presenters answering the question since this is so clear, the result is so clear. But apparently we have filtered the right people. Uh, since you have been interested in the topic, you probably uh, agree that it should be an integral bot. I somewhat agree, at least there's someone saying that, or it's just one of our people trying to cause confusion. Um, Let's move on to the second question about how you see the situation currently. Do businesses understand the different aspects and the potential of uh, the sustainable use of data? Okay, there we have some differences of opinion. And we find all possible replies. It seems that you think that they somewhat or very much understand. And there are some companies certainly that don't understand at all. Or we are in the dark. We don't really know what the companies think. Okay, by the way, you will get the results of these questions uh, later. And let's now move on the third question. How should 
the sustainable use of data be enhanced? This is an open question. So understand it takes a little while to get the replies, but just give us a few words about your um, your ideas, uh, because these are uh, things that we are going to share with you later. So you will help others by giving the replies. <clears throat> Clarification of different data types certainly is important since if we talk about the B2B envi environment, it differs a lot from the companies using personal data. Uh, more attention needed, a clear framework needed. This is what we have been trying to build here. The, the Functus tool is, is just one of them, the, the workshop series where we covered the topic with companies they had all kinds of ideas but there really aren't the tools there yet so we're using you as um, as an idea engine to to get more ideas transparency absolutely univocal definitions certainly very good very good replies we will document these and we will use them to discuss the topic later. And now to the last que question, number four. What kind of challenges uh, do you see in making data as part of CSR? Still an open question. And certainly I'm assuming um, there are plenty of different kinds of challenges. And that depends very much on the companies uh, since um, the industry uh, affects a lot. The, the challenges of forestry companies are slightly different from private hospitals. And then again, retail sector differs a lot from the engineering companies. So. Getting, getting a sea suit on board, absolutely. That is number one. It seems that the companies that do understand the potential of, of data as raw material for business innovation have their sea suit on board. Where to begin? That's a very good question because that was the question we asked the companies we were working with. And that answer uh, differs a lot depending once again on the industry. But I think one of the uh, things that Mikko tried to emphasize here was to, uh, you need uh, the fact that you need to understand your data assets. So you need to start from understanding where your data is, how you gather that data, where you store it, what do you do, do with it, how do you enrich it, and you need to address that also in your data strategy. Lack of standardization of frameworks. Absolutely, this is a new topic. Uh, a new area, we don't have the tools, we don't have the concept of data as part of corporate social responsibility. Companies talking about the responsibility at the moment, the major platform companies are the ones that are not very much, uh, how, do, how should I put it, uh, working there in real life. It's basically more words currently than, than actions. Missing competencies, that was one of the areas where the, com that the companies pinpointed when we asked what are the problems with realizing the potential of data economy. Competence was either number one or number two in all the, the countries where we had that survey. Oh, right, I think we've done with the questions. Now it is your turn. Uh, Gabriela, I wonder if you got a reply to your question about the integrated uh, data reporting. You asked whether it is separate from the annual report or the CSR report. Mick, what's your take on that? You're on mute. 
and I'll fix it. Now I'm live, hopefully. Do you hear me now? Yes, we do. Okay, good. So uh, this is the one question we also discussed with uh, with OP, and and we see in the in the future that this this could be one integral part of of so to say traditional CSR or annual reports. But as this is a quite a new field of reporting, so that the development work is is seen to be made, made more safely on on sandbox style. If you understand what I mean, so that they want to they build the concept a little bit separated from their from their structured and uh, standardized reporting form that they they go with with the with the financial statements and a CSR CSR report as a whole. But we wish and we hope that in the future, when when the standardization goes on in this topic as well, to, we would see that this this could be and should be part of of so to say the integrated reporting of, of company as a whole, not the CSR, not the financial, the integrated report of a company should contain data aspects. And after that, it is a question that what part of the data report is only for the, for the company for management purposes, it is the longer version and what is the, the published external version of, of the same report, namely for the stakeholder uh, communication. And this, this could be something Dividing, dividing the companies preparing one report or that there could be one bigger integrated report behind for the, for the internal use and then the external communication part can and could be part of, of the CSR or the integrated report of, of a company. But nowadays it's a team report and it, 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 it's quite a good because it's, it's isolated and it can be driven quite fastly through a company when developing one. Any other questions online, for example, to Heli about the memorandum or to Mikko or to me about the fair data economy? Uh, feel free, we have a few minutes left. May we have the next slide, by the way, please, because we've done the menti.com part. If there are no questions, I don't see any hands raised, so I'm assuming no questions. I don't see anything new on the chat either. Uh, so just to summarize, this is just a tiny, teeny weeny little example on things uh, uh, that are not fair or are fair. Um, this is about personal data mainly. Uh, you see the colorful rainbow colored um, stripes on the wall that those are actually A4s of different platform company terms and conditions. So if you look at the people standing next to them, you see that there's a lot of text. Uh, in our project, we feel that is not fair. Uh, we shouldn't, uh, it shouldn't be on our shoulders to understand the legal texts and the very, very complex uh, terms and conditions to be able to use these platforms. And on the right-hand side, there is an example on fairness. This is from Business Finland, of course. Uh, as a Finn, I'm proud of them, but there are many companies saying that, you know, uh, you can browse on our website without accepting the cookies. And this is the easiest way to do it. So the idea is being easy and not complex, not opaque. Uh, just an example. Um, who is responsible and takes lead in this improvement? And uh, Yasemin, I'm wondering whether you mean the fair data economy or the reporting part or, or something else. But at least uh, in Europe, uh, for example, uh, at Citra, we in our project, we're trying to gather all these different stakeholders, the companies, the individuals, for example, organizations such as UNICEF or the Scouts to talk about data usage. Uh, 
and also the public sector companies or the public sector institutions need to be involved as well. So we need to connect all these stakeholders and just start agreeing on how to do these things. At the same time, we're trying to influence, influence and communi communicate to the European Union, to the Commission, um, about the way we see things uh, and for example we have created 35 recommendations for the EU to implement the uh, European data strategy. So there are multiple levels and multiple different uh, streams that we're working with. You meant the reporting part, uh, then I would actually ask Mikko to answer that question. <clears throat> yes, that is a really, really good question, of course. And then when we see the evolution of the of the CSR reporting evolution in the in the 10 or 20 years, uh, what has taken place so that we are in the very beginning, of course, but but the need is now and, and there should be more fast ways to improve and to drive the reporting forward. Uh, in short, we have uh, made this report model uh, now uh, one concept how to report this. And, and in Finland, now we are, uh, so to say, uh, marketing and then driving around to, to make this uh, reporting concept more and more familiar so that companies as, and organizations uh, can assess the possibility of this. Can this re uh, reporting model be one route for this kind of reporting model? But then we come, of, of course, the question that this is a Finnish case example. Can, how can we uh, make that European wide? And then the, in the future, I hope that the story will continue, of course, on this side with use of, uh, with, the, with the help of uh, and the cooperation with the private and public sector as well. But I think we are in, in the beginning of a really interesting path. Any other questions? I, I sort of saw some questions in the chat. Um, uh, there was a question about uh, different behavior of companies. And I also already replied that there are certainly differences between uh, countries. Um, if we talk about individuals, the differences are even greater. Um, but if we talk about companies, the differences are in the areas such as data sharing that I mentioned uh, in the chat. Um, when we compare four countries, and we talked about data ecosystems, i.e. data network, net data networks where companies share data, for example, from individuals that have given consent for sharing data. Um, there were differences in the willingness to be, to be, for example, ecosystem uh, leaders. The Dutch were the most ready of the four countries to, to uh, sort of uh, start the ecosystems, to be the ecosystem drivers. And the Finns were most reluctant. And there were actually rather big differences between the countries. So yes, there are certainly differences, not just between the companies and the business cultures, but also between, between how individuals see trust and see the use of their personal data. I think we are pretty much done. We are here for you also tomorrow. So tomorrow at, I think it was at 10 o'clock, was it? No, nine o'clock CET, we are going to be here to talk to you, uh, answer your questions or, you know, take your email addresses if you want to approach us later. But we suggest that you start uh, understanding the topic or it, start explaining the topic to your near and dear uh, by downloading our memorandum CSR uh, encompasses data our publication that is online for the very first time today and for you. Uh, all of us uh, both FIPS, Citra and of course uh, Functus wish to thank you for being here and wish uh, 
wish to thank you for being such active uh, chatters uh, and um, we hope to hear from you soon. Uh, please contact us and please download the memorandum. Thank you once again and have a nice day.